Howdy there once again, YouTube. How you doing? My name is Ben Ferriolo, and I'm an amateur seismologist who enjoys monitoring volcanic and tectonic hazard areas throughout the country. Mainly volcanic stuff, though. I'm mainly into all the magmatic activity and stuff like that. If you guys haven't seen uh, Scott's new channel, please go check that out now. His channel is the NW Geology Guy. He's got a link, uh, I got a link to his channel in the description box below. Also, right below that is my email address, and right below that is the link to my website. Please go check out my website if you haven't already. There's just a huge amount of seismic plots and images on my website, and a bunch of different information. Trust me, it would take a long time to go through it all. I've already put a lot of content on there, and I'm still putting out new content to this day. Now, Steamboat Geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin has seen its 30, 32nd eruption, excuse me, and this was less than a day ago, actually. I'll show the data to that in just a second. Seismic Station YNM is finally back online, so I am able to get the seismic plots for this eruption, thank God, but I don't think USGS has reported it yet. But first, I real quick would like to talk about an earthquake that happened really close to where I live. So here we are on earthquake.usgs.gov. Now first, I really quick, notice how there is, let me pan this over just real quick, there's a 3.6 in New Mexico reportedly at 5.0 kilometers in depth at 025 UTC, December 26, 2018, which is also 425 p.m., December 25th, 2018. Okay, so, and then there's also a 5.1, and I'll show the data for these in just a bit. Oh, they downgraded it. So originally it was a 5.1. Now it's labeled a 5.0 in Italy. And this is part of the ongoing eruptive activity at Mount Etna, which I already showed in my previous video some of the seismic data from the closest seismic station, which resides on Mount Etna itself. But I did do a blog post last night, and I will show that in just a bit, showing a bunch of different seismic uh, events that have occurred just in the past few days. I show the eruption. I even show a low-frequency earthquake that looks exactly identical to the low-frequency events that we saw during the 2008-2009 dike intrusion event at Yellowstone Lake. But first, I real quick want to look at... It's nothing major, guys, but... I, we haven't had an earthquake around this area. So remember, you know, I live in Washington State, right here. And right here is where I live, right there. That's where I live. So this occurred pretty close to me, guys. And let's see, did anybody feel it? Nobody has reported feeling it. I didn't feel it, that's for sure. I think this was in the middle of the night, so not many people would have felt it. It was a magnitude 2.3, reportedly at 12.8 kilometers in depth, at 1918 UTC, December 26, 2018. So here we are at pnsn.org, recent earthquakes. Let's click on the map real quick. It'll bring up the recent earthquake map, if it'll go. Internet's being very slow today. For some weird reason, I don't know why. Maybe it's because it knows that I promised not to do another video. Well, I didn't promise, but I seriously thought I was only going to do that one video, two videos back, but I think I've done a few videos after I said I wasn't going to do any more videos. So, very interesting. We got some earthquakes. There was a short spurt in seismicity at Mount Rainier, but it's very, very mi uh, minor. Two up here near Darrington, which I thought this was near Mount Baker, but Mount Baker is far north. That's Mount Baker right there. Glacier Peak Volcano, the volcano I live closest to, is right here. Remember, Glacier Peak and Mount St. Helens are the only two volcanoes in, the uh, or in Washington State itself that can produce... Uh, very large, very devastating tephra and ash eruptions. Yeah, that's what USGS says, so I don't know. But as you can see, okay, come on, buddy, come on. I'm getting sick of how slow the internet is today. My goodness, and it says I have full bars, so it's not my problem, I don't think. Let's go to the event page real quick. Hope you all had a Merry Christmas, guys. It was very fun watching my kids open up the gifts on Christmas. Oh, and man, the magic in uh, my daughter Claire's eyes when she saw that Santa came and ate those cookies and drank the milk. She was so excited. It's always exciting seeing the effects of Santa. So it was a 2.3 magnitude at 12.85 kilometers in depth. The location quality was excellent, meaning that it's pretty sure that they got it spot on. Let's go to waveforms real quick, if it will let me. I'm not going to download the seismic data. I'm just going to show the waveforms for this 2.3 earthquake. Earthquakes do occur here and there around this area. 
They're not super rare, but they haven't occurred that much lately, so it is notable. This is 18.2 kilometers away. Remember the one on top, if you look at the PNSN waveforms when you go to their event page, the top uh, seismogram is always going to be from the closest station, and the bottom will be from the farthest station, from the ones they picked. The farthest station, though, is 60.1 kilometers away, which is not that far away, actually. So I don't know why they didn't pick a station that was farther away, or the farthest away station. I don't know. I don't know. Steamboat Geyser has had its 32nd eruption of 2018, which occurred at 621 UTC, December 26, 2018, which is also 1121 p.m. Mountain Time, December 25th. 2018 and is most likely the last eruption of 2018 and for the people in the united states in mountain time and pacific time it occurred on christmas so here is the seismic plot looks like it goes up to about 16,000, 17,000 amplitude count a little bit stronger than the last eruption but we do not I remember the last eruption the 31st uh seismic station ynm was not online so all we had to go on was the water data but even based on the water data the 31st eruption probably looks like the smallest eruption that pretty much that has ever happened now the 30th eruption which is the one that broke the record was very small it was by far one of the smallest steamboat eruptions of 2018 and they kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller look before that it was 30,000 before that it was about the same almost 30,000 before that it was above 40,000 before that, it was 60,000. Before that, it was 1E5, which is 100,000. Before that, it was 60,000. So it seemed to increase and then decrease. But it seems to fluctuate. Like, they seem to, some eruptions are stronger than others. But this one was a little bit stronger than some of the recent eruptions. And it doesn't look like this uh, current set of eruptive activity, which started in March of this year, 2018 doesn't look like that it's ending yet guys it looks I, i'm almost thinking that steamboat geyser will remain active permanently or at least maybe through 2019 but if it remains active through 2019 the 2019 will definitely break the record it'll definitely be more than uh 32 eruptions and that is the record right now 32 eruptions it used to be 29 eruptions which occurred in 1964 but on december 8th it broke that and then there were two more eruptions Again, here is the seismic plot for the event. Notice the dominant high frequencies, pretty much nothing below 10 hertz. Steamboat eruptions, uh, the ones that you see on the seismograms, the seismic vibrations are from the surface. It is not the vibration from the superheated water flowing to create an eruption. It is just the surface vibrations from the event. That is why you can use the amplitude count on the left to judge which ones were bigger and which ones were smaller. And here is the heli quarter for the steamboat eruption. Looked pretty big, but it wasn't as big as some other ones. I still haven't updated this right here. As of, it's going to say, as of the 32nd eruption, the strongest eruptions were the 13th and 18th eruptions of 2018. Let's just take a quick look at those real fast. 13th and 18th eruptions. Let's go down 11th, 12th. Here is the 13th eruption. Notice it goes to 1.5 E5, which is 150,000 amplitude count. That was a very strong, very, very strong steamboat eruption. And these spikes here, are, I believe, are rocks being thrown out. I believe this was the eruption where they said there were large boulders being thrown into the sky, which is can be deadly, so it's kind of dangerous for the people around there. And number 18 was the other largest event. Number 18, number 18, where are you? There you are. 1E5. So it's looking like right now the 13th eruption of 2018 was by far the strongest out of all of them. This almost was as strong, but is a little bit weaker. So I think that's very interesting. Steamboat saw its 32nd eruption. Let's go to volcanoes.usgs.gov real fast. And we're going to see if they are reporting the eruption, because I thought I saw on there that they're not reporting it. Let me just check real quick, and that could change, um, because I believe they are still on break, because it's Christmas. But still, it only takes like two minutes. You just go on here and say it erupted 32 times, and that's it. It's very quick. Nope, they haven't even listed it, because this recent one occurred on December 26th. The most recent on here is December 17th. 
and it still only says 31 times, but we do have the seismic plots, so we know the 30-second eruption did occur. Now let's compare with the water data real fast. Yes, there it is. It is right there. Discharge cubic, cubic feet per second, excuse me, at Tantalus Creek Station at Norris Junction. Notice the near vertical, almost perfect 90-degree spike. That is what you see during steamboat eruptions. Steamboat eruptions do not cause this. They do not cause this. This could have been a very, very tiny minor eruption, possibly. But always look for an almost perfect 90-degree angle going straight up. Perfect. And it has to go quite a ways, too. But, yeah, so steamboat erupted, guys. And we can see it right here and on these seismic plots. So, it did occur. Now, I really would like to talk about something real fast. Here's my most recent blog post. Um, I'm going to read the part about New Mexico real fast, but then I am going to just really quick overview the Mount Etna data. If you guys want to actually read about the Mount Etna uh, article that I have in here, please just come to my website, go to Seismo Blog, and click on the most recent blog about New Mexico and Mount Etna. First off, if you'd like to read this blog post, and please click the title above you see or click read more to continue. Seismic activity calmed during the late hours of Christmas Eve, depending on where you live. But volcanic activity at both Mount Etna in Italy and Mount Anna Krakatoa in Indonesia seems to be skyrocketing. In this blog post, I will quickly show seismic data for the recent and strange magnitude 3.6 earthquake in New Mexico. After that, I will show a good amount of seismic data for the recent eruptions and increases in activity at Mount Etna in Italy. Remember, professionals say Etna is sliding into the sea, and this was discovered months before this recent increase in activity. Could this recent increase cause the active volcano to slide into the sea quicker than they thought? Now, that's entirely possible, but we will have to wait and see. I will first very briefly talk about the New Mexico seismicity and then show the data for the Etna events. On December 26, 2018, at 025 UTC, which is also 425 p.m. Pacific Time, December 25, 2018, a magnitude 3.6 earthquake struck in a very odd location in New Mexico around 5.0 kilometers in depth. No, this did not occur near the supervolcano Caldera in New Mexico. And yes, New Mexico does have a uh, supervolcano. They do. But it's labeled as a moderate threat, which is one of the lowest levels that they have on there. One of the lowest levels. And there's no monitoring instruments at all in the area. There's probably like one seismic station and that's it. But if it used to be a super volcano, and they say that it's not quite dead because they have it labeled as a moderate th threat level, why aren't they monitoring it actively? I think that any volcano that has the potential to erupt again should have a good seismic array around it, just in case. Now, the first image you see above is the event page for this earthquake submitted by USGS. It says only two people reported feeling this event. Remember that this is only the number of people that decided to report it, not the actual number of people who felt it. This magnitude 3.6 earthquake was also followed by a few other smaller earthquakes that have yet to be reported. This magnitude 3.6 earthquake, oh, sorry, I, I went backwards, whoops. These earthquakes had dominant high frequencies well beyond the normal level, so these seemed like normal tectonic events. However, you never know, so monitor this area if seismicity increases. Now let me scroll down real fast. Now the second image you see, which is the image I'm showing right here, is the location of the magnitude 3.6 in regards to the closest seismic station, UNM2, in the YX network. Station UNM2 will be the station I gather data from to generate the seismic charts and plots shown below. Remember how quarter plots, the blue charts with multiple lines, help you see a broad view of activity. In-depth plots, such as the ones shown after the blue charts, are better used for in-depth analysis. Never, ever, ever try to judge an event just by using one helicopter alone. It doesn't work. You may think it does, but it does not. Good thing, though, that amateur seismology is just as possible as amateur astronomy. It really is, guys. As before, please pay attention to all chart labels that you see and pay attention to any captions beneath any images. All plots were generated by myself using data obtained from the IRIS database and the Seismic Analysis Program Swarm. Now, real quick, note that activity prior to 0000 UTC 1226th on the heli quarter, notice prior to this line right here, all of this is surface activity. There might be a little tiny microquake mixed in here, but I looked at these and this looks all like surface activity. High frequencies, a very emergent, 
doesn't really show on surrounding stations, but these did. These earthquakes definitely did. And let me scroll down to the first earthquake right here. Now, the multi-plot images shown above are in slideshow format. You can use the options in the top left or the top right corners to aid you in skipping to certain images. As you can see above, the only reported event was the magnitude 3.6. Of course, this could change by tomorrow, but now I'd like to go to the main course. Let us take a look at some of the interesting seismic events that have been occurring at Mount Etna in Italy. All right, there was a, actually a magnitude 5.1, guys. Check that out. And that's where, see, here's this closest seismic station. The one that I use for all these, here's Mount Etna, which is like right here. And here's where the magnitude 5.1 occurred. They just changed it. It was a 5.1 at 10 kilometers in depth, but they changed it to a 5.0 at 1 kilometers in depth. I will probably update this when I am done with this video. So this will be changed just a little bit. Now, before I start, I would like to people to know that Mount Etna in Italy is an extremely active volcano. Now, it goes through periods of increased activity and calms days, months, or even years later. However, that does not mean that we should take increases in activity lightly. Especially when, in October of uh, this year, 2018, scientists came out and stated that Mount Etna is actually slowly sliding into the sea. Yeah, pretty much the whole flank is sliding into the sea. They say it is likely this could take some time, but the more activity and the more eruptions, the more likely it is the landslide will happen sooner. Now, you may think of a landslide in the tr traditional manner, excuse me, such as the Oso landslide that killed 43 people in 2014 in Washington state. But this shouldn't really be labeled a landslide simply based on the sheer amount of land that is sliding. This should more accurately be dubbed a mountain slide. The entire flank of Mount Etna is falling into the sea. It is currently occurring at a very slow pace, but renewed eruptive activity would for sure increase the likelihood of this occurring soon, when I have no clue. Now, if you would like to read about the possible Mount Etna mountain slide, then please come to my blog and click here. I do have a link that you can go to to another article on another website that was not written by myself. Now, I'm not going to read any more of my blog post here, but I do just want to show you real quick some of the plots. Here's the magnitude 5.1, which was sadly downgraded to a 5.0 at 1.0 kilometers in depth. Here's the 5.1. Very interesting. Uh, had some more dominant low frequencies than what I would expect to see from a station this close to the event. I believe this is connected to the eruptive activity that is currently taking place. Here's a slideshow of... Okay, now here is the big eruption. Remember how on December 24th, there was a big eruption at Mount Etna, seen from very far away. That's it right there. Nope, that's not surface noise. Trust me, I already checked it out. Multiple stations confirm it. This is the eruption. And it almost kind of looks like a steamboat eruption in ways, but the characteristics are way different. These have dominant low frequencies below 2 hertz, as you will see in just a second. Let me show you, actually. Let me show you. Here is the eruption. This is the full look of the December 24th Mount Etna eruption. And I set a 3 hertz low pass filter. And I so I tried to filter out the earthquakes because I did not want to show the earthquakes for this plot. I just wanted to show the eruption only. And since the eruption had dominant frequencies below 3 hertz, I thought I would just erase all of the frequencies above 3 hertz. So it's pretty much just the eruption that you are seeing here. Now let's go down. Here is a zoomed in look. This is an LF tremor, low frequency tremor from the eruption. This is the tremor. Look at how strong this is. Now, the only way a tremor with dominant low frequencies can be caused this strong is usually during an eruption. Prior to an eruption, harmonic and volcanic tremor probably should not be this strong. This would just be an eruption itself. But this is, let me go up, this. I zoomed in on this part right here, and you can compare the times if you want. See, that says 11.35. Here's 11.30. So that's right about here I zoomed in, and that is what. And I do not have a low-pass filter on here. This is showing all frequencies, so it's unfiltered. Very interesting. You can tell dominant low frequencies below 2 hertz once again. Here's another picture of the low-frequency tremor, harmonic or volcanic, being caused by an eruption. This is an active eruption you see here, guys. This is not a, this is not prior to the eruption. This is the actual eruption. And these are the strongest parts. 
Look at this, guys. Look at this. Almost going up to 1E5. That's 100,000 amplitude count. Can you imagine a harmonic or volcanic tremor going to 100,000 amplitude count? That is freaky strong. But of course, we know that it's not an actual tremor underground. It's actually occurring above ground because it's an eruption. Now, here's another earthquake that occurred during, I believe, uh, this was, yep, this was right before the main eruption occurred. This is right before, probably about 30 minutes before something. This looks like a volcanic explosion. Kind of like the ones that we saw at the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii earlier this year. Here's another earthquake that occurred sometime after the main eruption. And it does look like a possible volcanic explosion or collapse. Pretty much based on uh, the characteristics and also how it looks very similar both, all of them, on the seismogram, spectrogram, spectra plots look very similar to the Kilauea eruptions. And I am going to make a separate seismic events page just for the Kilauea eruptions, showing a bunch of plots and what those eruptions looked like and some other events that occurred during that time frame. Now let's go down, but I have not put that out yet. I'm still working on that page. You know, here is another possible volcanic explosion or collapse. But look at how quick it was. This was very fast. From right here, that's 1843.30, 1843.36. That's only six seconds. So it only lasted 12 seconds, but was this strong? Going up to 2E6, which is 2 million amplitude count? That is odd. To me, that's very odd. That's got to be some type of burst or explosion or something. And to me, this did... This one right here did kind of look like an explosion, but it looks more like a shallow volcanic earthquake, in my opinion. Let's go down. Now, check this out, guys. Check this out. Strong low-frequency event at Mount Etna. This occurred not too long ago, but it occurred about a few hours before the magnitude 5.0 struck Mount Etna. Look at this. This is the LF event. Look at how strong it was. Almost to 100,000 amplitude count with dominant low frequencies at around 1 hertz and 0 0.8 hertz. Check this out. Keep that in mind. Now down here, this plot is from Yellowstone. This plot is from the December 2008 to January 2009 dike intrusion event underneath Yellowstone Lake in the northern section of it. Look at that. Now it's not exact, guys. The plots are not exact. But look at the similarities. You notice how they look very similar in some ways? Now look at the spectrogram plot. Remember, here's 10 hertz right here. And here's the 10 hertz line right here. This shows half of what the spectrogram down here shows. So you can just keep that in mind. Look at that. But here, compare something. See the bottom spike right here? Notice how it looks like an M. Kind of like someone drew an M going up, down, up, down. Right? Now look at this. Look at the same section down here from over a decade ago. Up, down, up, down. This area right here looks very similar to this right here. So I am thinking that it is connected to the same exact process of magma intrusion. And I don't know exactly what that process would be, but I'm thinking it's possibly resonance. Kind of like clapping a bell. You know how the vibrations kind of propagate away from the source. When you clap a bell. I think it's kind of like that, but either it's going into or out of an unknown catalyst. So it's very interesting, guys. I was very interested. And then I post a few pictures that I found on Google. If you want to see more pictures of the eruption, just go to Google. But yeah, the seismic data from the Mount Etna eruptions are amazing. And I'm going, going to actually make a separate page, like I said, for Kilauea for earlier this year. And I'm going to make a separate events page for the recent Mount Etna eruptions. Activity still is ongoing, but seismicity has calmed down as of the past six hours. But of course, that could skyrocket at any moment since the low frequency background tremor is continuing around 4,000 to 6,000 amplitude count. And it does seem to fluctuate, but I believe it is increasing. So that's it for the Seismo blog, guys. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas, and I hope you all have a wonderful New Year, and I will be back soon. I probably won't be back until the New Year, but as you've seen in my past two videos, I already said that like twice. So <laughs> something major happens, I will be back, guys. I hope you all have a great day. God bless, and Happy New Year.